Vietnamese homes are being targeted by a unique type of criminal. Dog thieves. These dogs are being sold for their meat to restaurants and slaughterhouses. It's a crime wave that's shocked Vietnam and has led to a spiral of violence, often deadly. I want to find out why some are prepared to kill for dogs. This is a busy market in Ho Chi Minh City. Vietnam has a rich food culture and people here enjoy eating many kinds of meat, including dog. This is a typical market road in Vietnam and down that way I've seen about eight stalls all selling dog meat and they're proving to be quite popular. This dog meat stall is receiving a new delivery. That's a live dog in there and they've just weighed it and then they go into these cages behind where they're kept until they're slaughtered and served out there for customers. The stall owner tells me these dogs come from the countryside. The dogs are kept inside very cramped cages. Many of them are shaking. It's just distressing to see how quiet they are. There's about 30 dogs here, you know, they should be barking like mad and they're just silent. In the last two decades, Vietnam has changed dramatically. It used to be one of the poorest countries in the world, but after market reforms, it's become one of its fastest growing economies. People are better off, and so they go out more often. Why are you here today? A boys' night out means lots of beer, and dog meat. This packed restaurant serves nothing else. It's the end of a very busy service at this restaurant and really it doesn't feel much different to a night out in the UK. People here are clearly enjoying themselves, they're having a great time, they're having a drink, but they're also having some dog meat. Most dogs used to be trucked in from neighbouring Thailand, Cambodia and Laos. In recent years, animal rights groups have largely succeeded in closing down these routes. But this has led to a big increase in demand for dog meat from inside Vietnam. Every day, trucks deliver over seven tonnes of live dogs to Hanoi. What's that? Is it dogs? Or is it cars? Is it trucks? No, it's dogs, they're moving. Can you stop? And I've just come across this truck. And it's full. So it's just one truck coming out of one village. Where are you taking them? The Hanoi. Where do these dogs come from? Are you leaving? You don't want to talk anymore. I head to Guyan, a province under constant threat from dog thieves. The majority of people in Vietnam live in the countryside. They farm, grow rice and raise livestock. What's striking is the number of dogs out here. They're absolutely everywhere. Almost every house you walk by has at least one dog, if not several. <laughs> Why is he in the cage? Dang Hung is a farmer and the owner of a grocery store. 
He raises guard dogs to protect his home. In the last few years, he's had 10 dogs stolen. Theo cái trục đường này á là tất cả các nhà mà sống ở hai bên đường á là đều bị mất chó. He tells me that here, people either keep guard dogs or raise dogs to sell for their meat. Dogs are considered a household asset. Ở trong xóm này á là tất cả các hộ là đều nuôi chó. Cái nguồn thu nhập nên cứ thấy mà cái cái cái, cái dân ăn cắp chó là người dân người ta không đồng tình mà rất là bực. Đấy. That evening, I head out on patrol with Dang. Dog thieves are often armed with knives and stun guns, so the patrol seeks safety in numbers. What's happening here isn't unusual. This type of patrol can be seen across Vietnam. This commune alone has lost over 300 dogs to dog thieves in the last few months. And the villagers tell me that the dog thieves are coming here almost on a nightly basis. Why do you think the dog thieves keep coming back? Cho nên là việc ăn trộm chó thì chỉ có bắt về đây là phạt hành chính như vậy thôi, không răn đe được cái bọn này. There's no prison sentence for dog theft in Vietnam. Most dogs are worth less than a hundred dollars, well below the threshold for criminal charges. So the rewards far outweigh the risks. Government officials have rejected tougher punishments for the crime, saying there isn't enough room in Vietnam's jails for all the dog thieves. What would you do if you caught a dog thief? Bắt được một vụ thì thường thường chúng tôi là những người đang có trách nhiệm thì cũng phải đưa lên các cái cơ quan nhà nước để xử lý thôi. Chứ còn không như mà để như vậy thì dân người ta đành chết mất. Người ta đem chết đấy. Dog thieves, alone amongst all other type of criminals in Vietnam, run the risk of being killed if they're caught by villagers. This is footage taken just after a mob killed a dog thief in this province last year. Twenty dog thieves have been reportedly beaten to death in the past five years, and many more have barely escaped with their lives. I head to the village of Ni Y Trung in the center of the country. They're taking me to the spot where they say it happened. In 2012, two dog thieves were caught by village patrollers on this spot. Cries of dog thief rang out and the whole village came flooding to the scene. Nhưng mà lúc đó người dân quá đông, thì tôi cũng một bụng bầu đi nhưng mà tôi ngày tôi mình ba tạ, tôi chén ra để cho người khác vui lại. The beating lasted for several hours. All these villagers admit having taken part, but they tell me they only intended to hurt the thieves, not kill them. If there was another beating, would you join again? Đừng vô tư, chặt tay này, chặt chân nữa. Hai tay này, chặt. Con thiên thì con tiến thân nó cũng chặt chứ không sợ. Nói lên giờ mà nếu có được là chặt tay chặt chân không đành chết. Không đành chết. Ten people in the village were prosecuted for the vigilante murders. Four of them have had their sentences suspended. In this part of Vietnam, dogs are rarely eaten. They're mostly raised as pets and guard dogs. People might find it very surprising to think that, you know, in villages like this one and others, that people are being killed because of dogs. Ở Việt, chúng tôi đánh chết một người vì con chó không phải là là vì thương tiếc con chó mà cái lỡ tai đây là vì cái cái bức xúc quá mà gây cho cái cái người ăn trộm chó gây cho chúng tôi mặc dù chúng tôi rất thương con chó. Bọn cao này hứa là tôi xuống một nơi là 85 tuổi, tôi đói nữa. 
thì thủ và tục nhỏ dưới năm đi à trước cách ba năm thôi mà phải thách thức nhận ra cướp được để mà rồi mà cướp nữa nó đem vũ khí nữa bây giờ ở sau là 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 là, là đem cả bột ớt này cả bột lưu huynh này cả là cả là, 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 là súng điện nữa thì thì họ đập chết là phải đó chúng đây cái thứ nó ra làm gì quá hấp tăng giặc nữa I wanted to see what was in store for stolen dogs. I've been told thieves sell them on to dog traders or slaughterhouses. So I head back to Hanoi to visit a slaughterhouse specializing in dog. It's quite early in the morning and the traders are just getting ready and I'm about to meet the owner of a slaughterhouse to see how she's preparing for business today. Q Vu has been running this dog slaughterhouse for 13 years, together with her husband, Lam Tran. They tell me people prefer to eat dog meat in cool weather. How many are you planning to kill today? <laughs> It's time to kill the first dog. Lamb grabs him from a pit in the back. He's rendered unconscious with two blows to the head. Then his throat is slit. Do you think the animals you kill feel the pain? There are no health, safety or hygiene regulations for the killing of dogs for meat in Vietnam. There are rules for the slaughter of cattle, pigs and poultry, but nothing for places like this. Over there there's a pit and inside there are about 10 dogs. It's quite dark, it's quite cramped and they don't look very well. The government has no plans to introduce any regulations. A previous proposal was abandoned when animal rights groups opposed it, saying it would legitimise the trade. So, with no paperwork required to say where the dogs are from, the dog meat trade is ideal for the black market. Do you think that you sometimes have stolen dogs here? Ta biết làm sao được? Nó giống nhau mà, không biết được. Mình chỉ biết là mình nhập là có hàng là mình lấy thôi. Q and Lam are a really warm, a really lovely couple. But it's very odd because they don't seem to really care about where the dogs come from. If they're stolen, then they're stolen. A new customer comes in. He wants Lam to kill this dog so his family can have him for dinner. He says it's his pet. You brought your pet to, to be killed today? Are you, you must be upset. It takes Lam four hits to finally bring him down. Was he a good friend to you? Was he a good companion? Cũng chỉ à đâu nếu mà ấy thì cũng có thể cũng coi là được thế được. Lam tells me this is not unusual. For many people, the same dog can be considered a pet and later food. And yet others are willing to risk their lives for their dogs. Ông Dương Trần Thế Nhị Thập Tế Tử Ư Giác Ngọ Niên Bao Hyun was 18 years old. He'd just finished school and was planning to travel to Japan. A few weeks ago, along with two friends, he was killed by dog thieves. Today, his family's holding a traditional prayer to send his soul to the afterlife. 
That was an incredibly moving ceremony and you can see the devastation and the heartache on their faces but talking to Bao's family members there's still a sense of shock as to why Bao was killed. Thieves had been targeting this village for several months. Bao became profoundly upset when the thieves stole two dogs he'd raised from puppies. Là có bạn lính rượu nói có đám bắt chó của mày à. Nó đang bắt ở bên ấp 8 thì lên dí quính nó bắt nó. Đây đi vô là ở ngoài đây nó đi không biết. Nếu biết là tôi không bao giờ tôi cho con tôi đi hết. The thieves fired a homemade stun gun at the boys chasing them. Nó bắn chết đâu, bắn bị thương thôi, ai nhà là nó bắn cứ bằng cố tình giết luôn, bắn ngay bằng tang là cố tình chết. Bắn vô đây xuyên qua bên này chết. Four people have been arrested for the murder of the three boys and are currently awaiting trial. Rất là đau lòng, rất là mất mát to lớn lắm. Suy sụp luôn. Suy sụp luôn. Lao tells me that in their households they don't eat dog. They consider their dogs part of the family. That's why his son was so upset when they were stolen. Nó thương chó. Tại vì con chó này là nó cũng như là nó cũng như là một con người vậy thôi. Nó tức, thanh niên nó tức. Tức là nó nó phải làm mà. Dog thieves have become hate figures across the country. On the outskirts of Hanoi, I managed to track down two of them. Đây là đâu? Cổ, cổ, cổ. Đi cái vớt đây. Vớt của cổ này. Xong đây, 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 đây. Lên 15 mét xong rồi bốc lên cho trong lòng. How many dogs do you think you've stolen since you started? Nó rơi 7 năm nay. 7 năm nay em bắt được khoảng độ... 3, con. Cả to, cả nhỏ. 3, con. They tell me on a good night they can earn up to a hundred dollars from the dogs they catch. But there are times they've been beaten up and once nearly killed by an angry mob. Người ta cầm kiếm này, người ta cầm dao này, người ta cầm cuốc này. Nó phải rơi vào độ 5-7 người ấy. Người ta đuổi theo hai thằng bọn em. Và bọn em thì đi nhà ở trong người lúc nào bị có dao. So you would actually kill someone over a dog? Bây giờ người ta bắt được mình, người ta sẽ oánh mình chết. Thì bây giờ mình oánh, mình phải chiến đấu để uh, lấy sự sống của mình. Đó, nên là như thế. Do you have dogs yourselves? You both have dogs? Là hai đời luôn. The thieves told me they sell the dogs to middlemen who pass them on to wholesale dog traders. I head to a village which is one of the largest trading spots for live dogs in the north of the country. It's another truck full of dogs heading into Sandong and that's a village well known to be a gathering point for dog meat traders. And men in trucks like that one and on motorbikes come here from the surrounding villages and areas every day to buy and sell dogs just off that little street over there. I walk into the first holding house I see. There's about 200 dogs inside. I speak to the owner. Where are the dogs from? <laughs> It's packing time. The crew is preparing a dispatch of dogs to Hanoi. First, they separate the animals, taking to the back the dogs that won't be sold today. It's a violent, stressful process. One by one, they grab the remaining dogs. The dogs are sold by weight, so force feeding them increases their value. A tube is forced into their mouths and food is pumped in and their stomachs bloat. It's all really quite a disturbing thing to watch. Does it hurt them? No. 
I just find that really hard to believe that that is not a painful process. The dogs are then forced into cages. Absolutely no space to move at all. And they're being hosed down to remove the vomit, the food that they've just been pumped with. Seven crates are ready to go, about a hundred dogs in total. But today is a slow shift. At busy times, the holding houses on this street process around 2,000 dogs in a single day. That was difficult, that was really difficult, because it's systematic. It's just house after house after house, packed full of dogs, and the same thing is happening to all of them. There are no laws at all against animal cruelty in Vietnam. Animal rights groups here are trying to convince the government to introduce at least basic rules about welfare and protection for animals, including dogs. But these talks are at very early stages. Coming back and seeing these dogs now, knowing what they've gone through to get here, and the fact that any of these could be somebody's pet, it just makes it harder. I return to meet Q. In the back, she shows me her guard dog. She tells me that Key was once one of the dogs destined to be slaughtered, but just as they were about to kill him, she noticed him looking at her. Would you ever slaughter him? Because of the violence surrounding dog theft, the Vietnamese are starting to talk about the many problems of the dog meat trade. without real punishment for dog thieves and laws against animal cruelty, there's no end in sight to the pain for people or animals.